Hello, and welcome to the Project Tango Concepts walkthrough. My name is Johnny Lee, and I'm going to talk about some of the major concepts on the software side that you really have to understand if you're going to build a Project Tango enabled application. These concepts aren't terribly complicated, but it's important to understand these three topics to know when and how to use them. In addition to being a full Android phone or tablet, a Project Tango device does three primary things. Uh, it does motion tracking of the device as you get up and walk around. It also learns uh, and is able to recognize an area when it has come back to the same location. And lastly, it has a perception of depth from the device. So let's start off with the top of motion tracking. When writing a location-based app, a GPS is a fine metric. It gives you pretty good information uh, down to a few meters, especially when you're outdoors. But if you wanted your app to work as you walked around indoors, you know, moving between the kitchen and the living room, GPS is typically not reliable enough uh, indoors. And so Project Tango adds new sensors to help with this problem. If you think about how uh, an optical mouse works, uh, when you pick it up and put it on a table, it tracks its position as you move it around relative to its previous position, and it updates the cursor on the screen. Uh, instead of being restricted to a flat table, uh, Project Tango devices can actually track their position as you get up and move around the room. And we call this motion tracking, and is one of the backbones of Project Tango. With a Project Tango device, you effectively get six degrees of freedom left to right, front to back, up and down, and three degrees of orientation. And those are reported back to you in metrically accurate estimates relative to the position the device was when it started motion tracking. Uh, that is, when you first turn on the device and launch an application, it starts the output off at 0, 0, 0, which is zero along every uh, axis. And any movements you do after that are relative to that starting position. As a result, uh, it's important to remember that the output of motion tracking doesn't have any higher level knowledge of the space uh, that you're in. It doesn't know uh, the position of the device relative to the walls or where you are in the room, and it doesn't know you're in a particular city or at a GPS location. That brings us to the second major concept that you should understand when writing a Project Tango application called area learning. Uh, this is what allows the device to recognize a place that it's been in before to localize in a particular space. Uh, and this concept is a little bit tricky, uh, so let me try to use a metaphor. If you imagine closing your eyes and being teleported to a, a room or a brand new building you've never been in before, when you first open your eyes, you're going to be a little disoriented and not really know, uh, recognize your environment. But as you start to get up and explore and walk around, you'll start to become familiar with the space and uh, understand what it looks like from different angles and different lighting conditions. Um, and as you keep doing this, you'll slowly and slowly become more familiar with your environment. So with a Project Tango device, it does the same thing. When you first enter a new space, it will track its motion through that area and store descriptions of what the area looks like from different angles and different lighting conditions. And when you come back to the same room or location, it's able to remember what that scene looks like and says, I've been in this place before, and I can adjust my uh, position estimate using that information. So area learning allows your apps to actually use pre-existing knowledge about the space, and we call this an area description file. This allows you to do fun things like leave virtual objects in different parts of the house, um, such as the kitchen or the living room, or even allow two Project Tango devices in the same space to understand that they're, uh, they're relative position to each other. The third major concept uh, you should be aware of when writing a Project Tango application is depth perception, or sometimes called point cloud capture. With the specialized 3D sensors, it's actually possible to detect if the device is facing a wall or how far it is above the ground, uh, or measure the distances to things like couches and tables. You can use this data to make virtual objects collide against the real world, such as bouncing off the walls or even hide behind uh, physical objects. So for example, you can take all the point cloud data and feed that into a physics engine in a game and actually have your characters uh, respond to the physical world. Uh, you can also store that point cloud data to a file, which you can then load up later to transform it into a 3D model um, if that's the application you want to build. So with the sensors on a Project Tango device, uh, these devices can begin to understand and react to the physical world around them, similar to a closer way to the way people do. And we're really excited to the way what you can build. 
Please visit our website at g.co slash Project Tango for more information on getting started. My name is Johnny Lee, and thanks for watching.